about this time, I saw um, a great still life exhibit by the Dutch masters of the period, late 1600s. And I was blown away that these things looked as fresh now as they did then. And I was, got really interested in that idea. This was a little side piece I had going on, you know, 20 or some paintings I've never shown anybody. Um, they were all endangered plants and animals, and I had a, a medhi pattern or a handprint. Um, so to me, they were represented sort of the hand of man, which took away their chance of surviving, and the hand of man that was also trying to keep it to, to survive, allow it to survive. Um, and that sort of led in directly into this whole series I did in about the mid-90s, I guess, uh, that was called Nature in the Margins. So it was my local environment where something was surviving in this little pocket that was undisturbed. Um, you know, it was just a Golden Gate Transit bus going by, but, you know, things just will survive if they have enough room. And it also gave me this incredible opportunity to go through lots and lots of uh, trying out of materials, of mediums, of pigments. And that's how I find about mummy brown. So people used to actually grind up mummy brains to make a color that's roughly that color. Maybe a little more brown. In my monitor, it's a little more brown. Um, it wasn't a very good pigment. It got very expensive, so people started grinding up any old mummy, a cat or bones or whatever. And uh, it, it was also called caput mortem, which means dead head. Weird. We now have much better colors that are much more permanent. But, you know, Indian yellow was made out of cow dung, that marigold petals were their only food. Cochineal is the squished up scale bugs that grow in cactus, and we still use that as a number one red dye. And, lipsticks and whatnot, and there's lots of those. So what I was interested in was the difference between a fugitive color that will not last and a pigment that is pure enough and stable enough that will last for an unknown amount of time. So I was at some of, at least one of those early Long Now meetings trying to build models as ideas were flowing around about how a library might look. And so I was already thinking in kind of a parallel track about permanence, about how to make something that might be worth, A, that might last, and B, some sort of statement that might be worth lasting, having last. And, and about um, 98, I got a mailer from the Sierra Club. It was the 100 most endangered animals in the United States. And this sort of aha moment, you know, that you have, I said, like, I'm going to make a Dutch still life painting which, you know, if I'd heard myself, I would have thought, wait a minute, are you crazy? But I just decided to try it. And this was the result. Um, at the time, I didn't have any real credentials in science. Um, I went to five universities, I think. Um, and these were the, the this was the list of the endangered things that I could get access to. So it's, it's a very odd collection of things.